They move high above the stage with grace and elegance, telling a story about a journey through life. The show, named High Art, came to Eastern Illinois University in August of 2011. This was a first for both Eastern and Pendulum Aerial Arts. Performed in the theater at the Doudna Fine Arts Center, this was the first time a show in which the actors would perform mainly above the stage rather than on it. And for Pendulum, this was their first full stage performance on the road. Months of planning and preparation came together two days before the public show. First and most important was the rigging and testing of the trapeze and silks from which the artists would be suspended. Locking, lighting and sound run-throughs were tested and revamped until it was just right. Suzanne Kenny, founder and artistic director of Pendulum, comes from a background in acting and dance. Her first introduction to aerial work came when she auditioned and got a part in A Midsummer Night's Dream. They cast all of the fairies in the air and I had never done anything and I remember the audition where I had to figure out how to get up onto a trapeze bar and, and this and that and anyway I think I actually got the part because I could actually talk and most of the other people there were just strictly dancers. So from there I absolutely fell in love with it. We did just some small very simple phrases on the trapeze and I worked on an apparatus called a sling and after we did that show my, another person who had been in the show, uh, someone named Mike Barber, we bought the equipment and we started our own company and it was the first aerial we called it Aerial Dance at that time, the first aerial dance company in Portland, Oregon. And, and when was that roughly? 1996, 96. 16 okay. years ago. So uh, from there, I was uh, co-directed that company for four years. And then in uh, 2000, I, I founded Pendulum and Mike and I went our separate ways. And I've had Pendulum for the last almost 12 years now. The beauty of aerial arts is in part to how effortless the performers can make it look. And while it may look simply like dancing in the air, the type of conditioning required for this type of performance is extensive, not to mention one needs to have no fear of heights. It's a totally different set of muscles and, and strength training that you need to do to be able to accomplish it and make it look effortless, which is what we, what we do. When people see our shows, they go, oh, you know, I could do that. That looks, it's, and it's very humbling when you come in to even see what it feels like to support your own body weight underneath a trapeze bar and just hold yourself. That's how my first audition was. The choreographer said, hold the trapeze bar and bend your knees and hold yourself up off the ground. And I'm gonna count how long you can do that. And I was able to do it for 45 seconds. And that was longer than anyone else in the audition. But that is nothing, you know, so, it is, and, and also I would say aerial work, um, and it's like dancing. You don't go on point your first month. It's a, it's a process, you, you know, you have years of training to be able to, to, to get to that point. And I, I say that it takes three years uh, from the time someone begins till they're really amazing and flawless and it's very organic for them to move in the air and also be able to do a character. For Suzanne, aerial work is more than just a feat of athleticism. It's a way of telling a story using the human form. Um, the thing that interests me the most as a person and as an artist is human relationships. I find they're difficult and yet interesting and multi-layered. And so uh, a lot of my work is sort of semi-autobiographical, obviously, you know, that's just sort of how it works when you're an artist, it's kind of cathartic and you want to get, you know, <laughs> things out, you know, th stories out. And I, I would say that for high art, it really is a culmination of, you know, 15 years of work. Um, and really having my, because most of the people in my company have come through my school and they're at such a high level uh, technically um, that we were able to do a, a show of this caliber. High art is Suzanne's vision come to life. The show is described as a personal odyssey inspired by great works of art. And so I knew the story that I wanted to tell. It's basically the story of someone's life. They're born, they're, then they come in and they see all of the things like the Garden of Earthly Delights by Bosch, shows like the good and the bad. And, we, and what we did, because it's a tableau of three canvases, we chose to show the nice part of it because it can be kind of, you know, it's very dark. 
Um, you know, and then from there it go, it kind of skips to a mother and a daughter, and you know, um, the the child wanting to grow up and separate. So we have the mother daughter scene. And I worked with another girl who worked in my company who was uh, uh, an art major. And so, you know, we, we collaborated together. Like I had the story in my head and then she would go, oh, well, what about that painting or what about that? And I told her the artists that I love, I love Picasso and I love Dolly, you know, and so we, we together, we chose, we chose the art. And I also wanted it to be accessible to people and not have them be necessarily obscure, you know, um, artists, uh, because I, we, we do have an educational component in, and I feel like it's a, it is a very good tool to you know, it's very interesting to find a piece of art and then act it out through, you know, through the body and through a story. Suzanne also performs in the show with her longtime dance partner, Luis Torres. Their piece called Kissing is inspired by one of her favorite artists, Gustav Klimt. We actually have been doing this act longer than high art. Um, but when, when we were going to do the show, I said, oh my God, I could have actually done a whole show with just Klimt. But our act it is kissing. I mean, when you see it, that's what it's romantic. It's a story, a love story of two people. Um, so that's sort of been the signature, you know, component of the show. Well, I absolutely love art, and I've always considered. Um, I'm amazed at the human body and what it can do. And um, to me, it's like I'm the artist. I, I'm the, I'm the creator, and then all of my dancers are the art and they fill in the canvas for me because it makes me very emotional to talk about. Um, they're also, um, you know, they contribute so much artistically, like I will give a concept and I let them go with it. And um, in my company there is, you know, I'm not the, uh, I am the concept person, but everybody gets to be creative, which is I think very unique for most companies because it's usually one sort of one person at the helm doing all the choreography and it gets kind of narrow. Um, so I feel like what's really rich about this show is the artistic contribution that each of the artists has made. And the whole story of, of high art is that, you know, it's like from Adam and Eve through the Garden of Risley Delights, all through life, you have your ups and downs, but in the end you can stay together. So that's the hope, and that you ascend to a higher place. So it has a nice happy ending, which in life, Things are kind of rough out there, so I really like being able to give people that also, that they can go out of the theater and, and be like, wow, I just saw something really beautiful and forget about what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm.